Um, now for our keynote. I'd like to welcome my friend Katie Maynard here today, uh, the architect of cultural change in energy. Katie is the founder and CEO of Ally, the global community powering an equitable energy transition and addressing the energy workforce of the future, something I think we all care about. Katie has held global leadership positions with BP and Shell and safety and environment during periods of financial crisis, spills, divestment, and globalization. Katie's early career included consulting with Duke Energy, Intergy, and Enron. Her corporate path drove her to entrepreneurship to help energy companies prepare for the looming talent shortage and workforce diversity needs to address energy poverty and climate change. In 2020, she was appointed as an ambassador to the United States Department of Energy, and she still is. And in 2019, she testified before Congress on the clean energy workforce of the future. She's published in Scientific American, Forbes, The Hill, CNBC, CNN, CNN and other international outlets. Uh, she's also a great follow on LinkedIn, by the way. Um, she is the founder of Lean In Energy, a global nonprofit solely devoted to uh, mentoring in the energy sector. Her, her book, Grow With The Flow, Embrace The Difference, Overcome Fear, and Progress With Purpose was released in 2020, and I ordered it yesterday off of Amazon, looking forward to reading that. Uh, an entrepreneur, Katie's business ally was recently accepted into membership with Greentown, and Katie, uh, for me, achieving everything, even has her own Wikipedia page. Katie, thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, for uh, for for hosting this, uh, I love I love being able to uh, interact with people who have energy because we have a lot of big challenges ahead of us, and um, it's just great to be here and great to see so many people. So, and I know I know Katie that you're passionate about workforce issues mm -hmm. and making sure that people have opportunities, that all people have opportunities, and that the energy transition is adequately powered. And I think this that's going to inform a lot of what we'll be talking about. Um, years ago, you established Pink Petro and recently rebranded re it as Ally. What is Ally and why is there a need for it? Well, so if I look back, um, I started this six years ago. I was sitting next to a gentleman on a flight who said very nicely to me, what's a pretty young lady like you doing in a dark, dangerous business like oil? <laughs> and I, I saw these two things, um, equity, so, you know, uh, gender equity, right, and um, an environment on kind of this married index, you know, and for a while now, I've known that our energy system isn't fair, it isn't just, um, and that's not because we didn't set out for it to be, um, but it's changing, right? Our world is changing, and so I felt like we needed a space to make energy social and fun, and why not throw a, in a little pink, but the pink and the Petro piece mm. obviously evolved. We had companies calling us from the utility space, from renewables, from climate tech. Um, my belief is that Ally represents, well, first of all, it means a force for good. And so a force for good means something I think we can all get around. Um, we know that our energy um, uh, has brought us to this great place around prosperity. Humans want to progress, but we're harming our environment, right? We're having floods, we're having fires, we're having these issues. And so humans are gonna be the ones, not the machines and not the technology, not the, you know, not the things that we create. Humans are gonna be the ones that come up with these breaky, you know, breaking ideas. And so Ally is rooted around, everyone can play a role in this. All energy can play a role in this. We're not gonna get rid of fossil fuels overnight. Uh, do we need to reduce our carbon emissions? Absolutely. But this is a human challenge it's not a tech challenge. And so our company focuses all around that, providing a wealth of information, helping to connect people, and it's about jobs. We wanna be that spot for jobs um, so people can be uh, deployed in this transition. Great. Um, well, you're clearly passionate about the energy in the workforce, and you have um, deep roots in oil and gas and are deeply connected with a lot of voices in that sector, and what, what concerns and interests are you hearing from that sector? Many, and I think probably many of our attendees come from that, that sector as well. You know, I think the first thing I hear uh, is, are we gonna be a part of this? 
right? Um, when I think when the administration and I can be very candid because I'm a uh, I'm not in a company, so I can I, I can talk about the politics of things. You know, when the administration, really the world has made this bold statement about reducing carbon emissions and the end of fossil fuels, I think the reality is, is we know that we rely on them. And so we're going to have to whittle at this. It's a transition. For some, the transition in, in, in their minds may be a flip of the switch. We know that's not going to happen. Everyone that works in the industry understands that. It's, it's to degree what pace. So I think there are a lot of oil and gas folks out there who are concerned about how do I apply this great knowledge that I have? Um, and I think they want to be a part of it. Um, this has been an industry that has largely kept quiet about what we've done. That's a, that was a mistake. I think we all recognize that we could do more to educate people. And I know we'll talk about energy literacy at some point. But really what we've got to do as people is look around the room and say, what kind of talent, right? And what kind of diversity can, of this talent can we bring uh, to this energy transition? It's going to be a flourishing. I mean, you and I talked about this. This pandemic has been awful, okay, for everyone. If you look at history, the tailwind that comes from a time, in, uh, a time in our history of disease generally means there's an opportunity for innovation and flourishing. So I look at this and I say, what an opportunity. Um, so I, I hear the concern about, am I going to be relevant? I think the other thing what you always hear about is wages, costs, am I gonna be paid fairly, right? And the, what I tell people is, you know, I left the industry to uh, take a job for zero pay for two years. My <laughs> husband didn't like that very much, but I did it because I knew that I would be building something for the future. And so as we start to, to see this shift, I think we need to less worry less about wage and put more focus on what are those opportunities, gaining those skills, because my prediction, and I still contend this, is that we will be woefully short on talent. The US government, both sides of the aisle, the Department of Energy has said for years, we need more people in energy. It is not something people have uh, have studied. It's not something, it's not a pardon the fun, sexy you know, job. And so if you look at our past and you look at our future, there's a lot of opportunity. And typically when you're short on talent, that means wage, wage will you know, rage will rise. So I, I, I hear those two things. Are we relevant and are we going to be pa paid fairly? Um, and that's kind of, you know, what I'm hearing at least uh, right now. Right. And we have, we have a lot of work to do, I would say. Um, I hate to say both sides because energy should be energy. But the reality is right now we have two sides and we need to, we need to work to bridge that so that we're all uh, talking the same language and working working in the same direction, and I know that that you're that you're big on that. Um, you've been you've been an outspoken voice on diversity and inclusion in the energy space. And what what do you see as our challenge as we're building this really larger energy community that bridges both hydrocarbons and renewable energy? How do we build that culture of diversity and inclusion? Well, you know, uh, one of the, I'm gonna steal from uh, some stuff I've seen recently come out by the federal government and um, it's, it's called energy justice. You know, I've, I've seen this term and I've shown a lot of interest in what that means. And what that means is people first and then planet. So the goal is how do we galvanize everyone's thoughts and perspectives right around what the energy system should look like? It is no surprise um, that a carbon economy is obviously very closely tightly knit to capitalism, right? And so this is the big argument right now is, is capitalism going to go away? Is socialism going to run free, right? We have to, as people, make thoughtful choices about how we're going to design this system and make sure that we're bringing everybody right into the room. So I, I find it interesting that this notion of energy justice, at least some of the, the, the literature I'm reading, is let's talk about people and their needs first, right, and then look at, at planet. And so I think that what we need to see is we absolutely need to see more diversity in the in the room talking about this. We need to see people of color, indigenous people. We need to see um, women right at the table. I look at this actually as the biggest opportunity for inclusion, okay? So if you were to say, what's, what's a great 
test bed for diversity and inclusion. And it is nothing just to do with, with uh, the color of your skin or anything. It's we're humans. This is society, right? If we can get more people to be thinking about what this needs to look like and to be interested in being a part of the solution, then we'll, we'll advance. Um, as humans, we're incredibly, I'm not a science person, but I, I'm a geek when it comes to anthropology and, and movies and things. I'm very good friends with a um, Hollywood actor um, who just came out with a, a movie called Hot Money. Um, uh, Jeff Bridges and, and a lot of his work explains has humans how we progress and how we have that drive that it's in our DNA. So I think at the end of the day, when we redesign this, we've got to just have more voices at that table. And that's not to say the men that put the first system, you know, into play, the guys that settled the wild, wild west of Texas and struck oil don't have a role. It means we all have a role. So I think it's actually a beautiful way to get people excited about the transition and get them interested in the transition and get and get consumers focused right on how they can be a part too. Right. Yeah, because we can't just lean solely on well, technology will solve it. People have to solve it, right? Absolutely. And it, and and look, make no mistake, I actually went and got a carbon, you know, I went out to Terra Pass and I did my own carbon footprint two years ago after I, I watched Jeff's first movie. It's called Living in the Future's Past. And it made me so aware of my own footprint, things that I myself, it's like getting on a scale, you know how much you weigh, right? So if we can own our own, right, our own, the things that we control, it also helps you think about other ways we can encourage people, right, to shift and make change. So this is a big thing, and it's something we've got to unite around. I worry that if we're too divergent, um, we're not going to meet the goals and and that nobody wants that because we've seen what 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 climate change is doing to um you know er eradicate wealth um to making the poor poor you know and the like so right um well i don't want to i want to make sure we when we do touch on one thing because i'm stealing it and that is um the concept of energy literacy and what why don't you it, that's something that you speak about why don't you give your if you could share your views on that no, sure. So as a part of the Workforce of the Future initiative we put together through Ally, one of the pillars is energy literacy and the energy value proposition. And all of you know this, particularly if you're in Texas. Okay, February was the greatest example of how consumers finally felt the pain, right, of not having a reliable system. And we're not going to argue what happened, but I will say that what happened was human has nothing to do with technology. It has everything to do with human beings. And so that's what we're about, is looking at the human you know, element of, uh, of this. But energy literacy is something we all need to be mindfully aware of. My daughter, who's 10, I asked her where ketchup came from. The kid doesn't know anything about, ag about agriculture. She doesn't know anything right about um, her food, where it came from. Kids, Nobody knows, right, how we, we've, you know, things have come to be. And so I think it's important the more people understand about the global supply chain, about um, energy literacy, they're aware of consumption, they're aware of CO2, right? All those things start to kind of, you know, get connected. So we're really big on that. And that's, uh, that's something that I think is really important um, for, uh, for not just people in the industry, but obviously the public at large. Right. So. Yes. I mean, I think that people are now aware, at least in Texas, on how critical the grid is, how critical power is. And one thing is somebody who's worked in power that I became very aware of was that there are 99% of people don't really understand how all that works. And that's good in a way. You shouldn't have to worry about that. But when it comes to making decisions going forward, uh, it, it will be an opportunity for people to participate in that decision-making process by understanding it a little better. And so I'm, I'm just blatantly stealing the concept of um, energy literacy. Uh, so again, we're, we're about to wrap up, but what are you, what's, what's going on at Ally? What are you doing to help people who are uh, maybe looking to make the transition into the transition from oil and gas and, and, and what, what thoughts would you share with them? So here's what I would share with you. Um, first, we've talked about this already, but I'm going to hammer it in everybody's head. 
this transition is an opportunity if you choose to see it that way. Um, so a lot of this is we have to personally get ourselves around, get our heads around. I might have been something my first 10 years. By the way, in fair disclosure, I was a big oil girl for several years in health, safety, and sustainability, and now I'm an entrepreneur, right? So jobs are not going to be static. They're going to change, but I think that's that's an opportunity, right, to learn. But one of the things we're, we're doing that's coming up, and I want to make sure everybody sees this, is we have an event every year called Energy 2.0, and I know, Kay, you're going to come and speak. The first day is all around electrification, renewables, oil and gas, decarbonization. And then the second day is around workforce. And we're going to have some deeper dive discussions about this. Because one of the things I feel like is my role is as someone who's been asked to sit with this Department of Energy, um, you know, uh, uh, ambassadorship, how can the private sector inform the public sector on what's happening on the ground. What are the concerns, right? How are we going to get into the nitty gritty of um, the skills transition? So I'm, um, I'm sending this out so everybody can kind of see the, the main page. The first link is how you get to um, seeing, you know, uh, what we're up to. The second link is um, a way to get in free because you came here and Real uh, Houston is a partner. But this is one of the big things that, um, you know, we're proud of doing is being able to bring different people together, different ideas together. Um, listen and hear from everyone. Um, Ally stands for advocate, listen and learn. And the why is for you and me. Um, but what we want to be able to do is, is take practical, uh, you know, facts right forward so that we help inform um, our government partners. Um, I know this is a sticky political topic. Okay, I know it is. Um, so I'm one of those people that's about building bridges. And that's what we are trying to do through allyship. You know, we need all people and we need all forms of energy. We need to be listening to different perspectives and we need to take the emotion out of this and take it straight to our leadership and say, this is what we think, you know, we need. Um, we've got to work together though. We've absolutely got to work together. So um, we'd love for you to come check out the site. We're kind of like a LinkedIn for energy. Um, and we have some really big plans around jobs and our job site. So we do have a job site. And we would love for you to be um, a part. Great. Well, Katie, thank you so much. And I and I hope to see people there. And, and um, I'm flattered to be a part of the program. And thank you for the opportunity for people who are here today to participate free. That's a, uh, you guys ought to check that out. That's really a great, that's a very generous offer. Um, so thank you so much, Katie. Uh,